Now we can't feed the data directly as an input raw data to the machine. So we have to pre-process it so that we can have better predictions, better results. We can achieve better performance of the model. So what are the loopholes that you can get in your data and how to handle them? What are the strategies to handle them? We have to learn that. So we have seen it can be the case that some data is missing. There is some noisy data. There are some data attributes that are on different scales which can't be compared. You are having categorical type of data, but that has to be converted to numerical attributes. How we can reduce the features if the data is imbalanced, how we can balance it, how we can improvise in short and nutshell the performance of the model by feeding the appropriate data to the model so that we can apply the machine learning algorithms and can achieve better results. So this was the crux that why we are doing data pre-processing. So step by step, we will see now what are the steps and how we can implement using Python. I hope it's clear till here. We have stopped till here. Now we will move towards the steps of the data pre-processing. So first step, as you know, we have seen the entire machine learning life cycle in the last session. And in that first three steps are important. You have to collect the data. You have to prepare the data. You have to wrangle the data. Now you have to collect the data. For that, I have already told you what are the diff different data sources you can use it from the open public data sets are available you can, like Kaggle, SCI, UCI, AWS, Microsoft data sets. Various open platforms are there. Researchers are working in different domains and posting the data sets to ease the task of other researchers so that they can apply machine learning algorithms in a simplified way. They need not to struggle out to get the data. So this way, one of, one of the way to collect the data is that from the open sources, you can collect the data. Another way is that using different APIs, if different websites permit you to crawl their data, then you can crawl the data and use it from the Twitter, from the Facebook, from the LinkedIn. But some websites are not permitting, so you, we have to check out the permissions and then only we can legally crawl the data, extract the data. So this is the first step that how you can get the data set. After getting the data set, you need to import the libraries. The basic libraries that are used are NumPy, Pandas, which you are frequently using for arrays, for calculations, mathematical calculation, Pandas for data manipulation. You need to manage your data sets. You need to apply the functions on the data sets, how you can extract the features that is independent variables, how you can extract the dependent variables. So you need to import the libraries to work out on that data sets. After that, you need to import the data set. Firstly, you have collected. Now on the platform, you have to import the data set on which you are going to work. Then, Excuse me, ma'am. Ma yes, PPTs are not transiting if you are transiting it out. And yeah. on the slide, ma'am, steps in there, right? Now, now we are able to see it. Okay. So uh, first step I have already discussed that we have collected the data set, then we have importing the libraries. Then third step is you have to import the data set onto your platform. So how you can import the data set onto the platform that we will see how we can do that. Then we have seen what you have to do in data pre-processing. You have to handle the missing data. You have to handle the categorical data. Before applying the model, you have to split it time to training and test set you have to apply feature scaling to bring the attributes on the common scale how you can balance the imbalance data how i take the outliers what are these steps means these all steps have to be done before feeding the data into the machine so these are the steps that you have to follow in data processing this is the general template whatever i'll be telling you how to do all this this is the general template you have to work out depending on what steps are required for your problem statement. You can implement the same steps just with a few minor changes. You can implement the all these steps with just few minor changes and what steps are applicable to your problem statement. You need to identify that. So these are the steps that we will be following. We will be implementing in the data pre-processing. 
after this so first understand basically we have seen that may what is the missing data so we have seen you can see the example uh, like i have given you the example where we are having the transaction ids we are having refund yes or no marital status taxable income and whether he will be doing the fraud or not so you can see i have highlighted with the yellow color the income is given in 10000 which is very different from the other income values so we are not pretty sure whether it is a mistake or he is it this is really a correct entry or it is an outlier outlier means it is different from the other observations so we have to detect such certain outliers if they are present then how we can detect them how we can handle them secondly you can see the missing values it can be the case some have not filled the data some are not interested in filling the marital, marital status so they have left out the entry as blank some have not whether what the, what will be the input corresponding to this so some of the missing data can be there and similarly some of the entries can be duplicate which will unnecessarily lead to inconsistency of the data so we have to improvise the data quality as i already told you data quality and data quantity both are important to get the better results so these are the some examples that why there are reason what is the reason that we are having the missing values in the data what we are getting so it can be the case the people are not submitting their data people are not interested in submitting their personal information people may refuse to submit the information so that can be one of the reason that you are not getting the all the entire entries filled there can be some missing entries some things can be like you are having certain data but some attributes are not are not valid for the candidate for the user who is filling the data like some children is filling the data but it is not income attribute is not valid for that child so it means he will leave that entry blank so these can be i have just mentioned a few of the reasons that why the data can be blank why the data can have some missing values now how we can handle that missing values one of the simple solution is that you just delete the rows which are having the missing values but whether we should take this decision we should delete the rows that are having missing values say if your data set is too large and only 1% of missing data is there then it will not impact the quality that it will not impact that you have lost various data it will not be the case so if your data set is too large and your missing part is less it is 1% of the entire data then obviously you can go ahead you can just delete the rows that are having the missing values and uh, it can be the case that you are you want to retain that value so how you will handle that it can be you want to replace the missing values with certain value so what value can be replaced instead of missing value so we have to check out what are the different criteria so first we have to understand that we have to handle missing data what is missing data what are the reasons of having missing data in the uh, what are the reasons that we are having missing entries and now how we can handle them either we can delete them we can ignore them or we can replace them with some value or we what we can do what statistical measure we can apply so that we can handle the missing values efficiently this is the concept of missing values so first we will implement this part and then we will move to the next part second thing that i have told you that noise can be there means some distortion of data is there due to some human error due to some sensor errors whatever the problem you are solving here i have given you the example that when you are talking to some person it can be the case due to some disturbance your voice is distorted so that is adding cont contributing as a noise to your original data so how we can detect such human errors experimental errors in your data that we have to check out another another loophole in your data can be that you can have duplicate data that is unnecessary increasing the redundancy of the data we have to be make the data consistent there should be no duplicacy so what we can do we can delete the duplicate entries directly or what we can how we can deal with this issue so we have to do all this process in the data wrangling process before giving input to your model 
what are outliers we can see that you can see outliers are the observations that are different from the other observations means your data is lying within say range minus 100 to 100 but there is some data points that is having lying at 500 position so it means that will definitely be an outlier that is lying at extreme higher range which is not lying all the observations were in the range say minus 100 to 100 but one data point was at location 500 it means or it is lying below minus 100 that is also a very extreme situation so the observation which is entirely different from the other observations that are present in the data set that is the meaning of outlier so how we can handle that outliers why do they occur how, what do they affect how we can detect the outliers there are different methods we can draw the plots we can calculate the iqr that is interquartile range what are the techniques to handle them we can use trimming capping techniques median imputation we can do to handle the outliers so we have seen what is missing data how to handle noise what are different techniques to handle outliers they will what they will do i'll give you an example you can see in this example that we are having some entries as the, in the data set and now the data set is very short by quickly looking at the data set you can simply check out that what is the outlier what entry will be happening as an outlier you can see all the entries are between 9 to 15 9 to 18 but one entry is 101 so it is it is very much clear by looking at the data that this is an outlier as it, this value is much larger than the other values which are present in the data set so this means but but here the case was that the data set was very short you can immediately check out and tell that this is the outlier but if the data set is very large then how you will find whether this entry is an outlier or not we will see that how we can do that but what outliers are affecting you can show in you can see in this example we are having three major central measures of tendency in statistics that is mean median and mod so if we are calculating the mean with the value present then we are getting the value mean value for this data is as 20.08 but if we are excluding the outlier then the mean value is 12.72 so mean is the central tendency measure which is uh A minute, there is some internet connection. Okay, so now you can see that uh, that mean value is affected. You can see we have calculated the median also for this data set. Median is coming out when you are including the outlier means when you are including the 101 entry, then the median value is coming 14.0. But without outlier, it was 13.0. So it is not affecting this measure. That is median is 14.0 and here it is 13.0. Even if you are excluding the outlier entry. Same is the case with mod. Mod means, you know, that is the most frequent value that is occurring in your data set. The mod is 15 without outlier also and with outlier also. Variant standard deviation. The, obviously these will be affected because variability in the data is one of the reason that causes that outliers to be present in the data your data is very much variable you are having extreme range one is at very higher end one is at very lower end so that means your variance of the data will be affected but if we talk about mean modern median then mean is the measure that will be most affected if you are including the outlier and if you are not including the outlier so we have different techniques how we can handle them we will see that so but uh, till now you should be clear with what is the meaning of missing data why it is occurring inside the data what is categorical data why it has to be converted to numerical attributes what are outliers how they are affecting the data and how to handle them because if one value is at extreme end it means it is detroiting the quality of the data so we need to perform some action to handle them so in this way these are the steps these are the steps that we have to follow to pre-process the data to clean the data to make the data suitable to feed it into the machine learning model 
next i have already told you that we have to split the data we can't work on the entire original data this is one of the step in data pre processing that we have to split the data split the data means you will divide your original data into two parts one will be the training part and other will be the testing part so say this is the i have given an example you have to predict the sale price of this car and you have to predict the sale price of the car this means you are predicting the variable that is price of the car which is a dependent variable which you are predicting that is known as dependent variable and you are predicting the numeric value so you can and if you are providing the labeled data then you can go ahead with the regression algorithm now you have to predict the price of the car on the basis of the mileage what the car mileage is and what is the age of the car how old the model is so what we have done we have divided our original data set of we are having what what we are having in the data we are having different cars mileage and their age now on the basis of mileage and age of the car we need to predict the sale price of the car so we have divided our original data set into two parts one is the training part you can see this and another is the test part so generally we divide the original data into 80 20 ratio so 80% of the data will lie in the training set and 20% of the data will lie in the test set now this training data will be given as an input after cleaning it and then we will apply some regression algorithm so we have we have written the regression equation that x1 and x2 are independent variables that are features that is age of the car and mileage of the car and y is the value that is to be predicted that means this is the sale price of the car that is to be predicted and b not b1 b2 are the regression coefficients that we will estimate using the regression equation so now you can see when we are having the training data we are having the test data we have applied this met mathematical model or regression algorithm on this training data and when we are giving this new set of data that is the test data then your model will predict the sale price for this observations now we will compare these predicted values with the actual values what are the differences between the predicted and actual values that will help us to estimate the accuracy of the model if it is closer to the actual values what your model is predicting it means your machine is trained well your machine has learned well from the data that means your accuracy will be more you will be having the better performance of the model and if there is a large difference between predicted values what your model has predicted for the sale price and the actual values which were actually present in the data because it is a labeled data we are already providing mileage age and then we are predicting the sale price so if there is a difference large difference means a error is there so it means we need to further improve either there was some mistake in the data or the data was less or data is not properly cleaned or there can be n number of reasons that why you are not getting the better accuracy and how you can improvise the accuracy but this is where what i want to focus on that why we need to split the data because for new test points for new test data this will help you in evaluating the performance of the model in calculating the accuracy of the model so we have to split our data into training and test set and standard ratio is 80 to 20 that is we divide our data into 80% as the training data and 20% as the testing data so after that i already told you that we have to apply the scaling we have to normalize the data like i have given you the example if you are having two different attributes there are different scales so they can't be compared so we have to bring them out in the common scale in the normal range in the common range so that we can compare those attributes so there are different techniques to scale those features to bring them on a common scale one is normalization another is standardization so these are their standard formulas x is the feature you will subtract the minimum x value from the x for which you are calculating divide 
divided by x maximum minus x minimum. Now what value we are converting certain value into a defined range. Then you will be getting all the answers in the range 0 to 1. So it means you have normalized the data. The value which was very large or it was very less, then it will come out into this range. Standardization is another technique of feature scaling in which we are using that X value minus the average value that is mu divided by the delta that is the standard deviation. And now the values, the range that will be the outputs that will be coming within the range minus three to three. So it means you have standardized your data. Now all the attribute values will be standardized and they will be coming onto the common scale within the range of minus three to three. So how we can do that for this? We are having the formulas you have seen with an example. I can make you more clear what exactly feature scaling is. It is not necessary that all the data require feature scaling. Some of the algorithms will be requiring feature scaling wherein the attributes are on different scales and you need to compare the attributes to predict the dependent variable. Like I have given the example here. This is an in income attribute and this is the age attribute. There are three persons. Their respective incomes are illustrated and their respective ages are given. So you need to suppose find that this person P2 which is shown in purple color, whether it is similar to person P1 that is of blue color or it is similar to person P3 that is of red color. So you need to find that whether person P2 is more similar to P1 or it is more similar to P3. So if you see the data just by seeing the data, observing the data, you can simply see you will see the difference between that. It you will see that P2 is having income of 60,000. If we see whether he's similar to P1, he's having income 70,000 differences of $10,000. And if you see the difference between P2 and P3, then the difference between their incomes is 8,000. And difference between the ages of P1 and P2 is one year, 45 minus 44. Similarly, the difference between the ages of P2 and P3 is four years. Now, if you just by observing the data, you need to answer out that whether the person P2 is more similar to P1 or P3, you will say that he is more similar to P3 because one and four gap is very less. And if we see this gap, then 8000 is less gap and 10,000 is comparatively more gap. So P2 is more similar to P3. But now this is we can't even compare income is in dollars and age is in years. We can't compare the attributes, but just by having this mental image that the gap is 8000, so it seems to be less gap between the persons. So the, he seems to be more similar to this person. But when we actually find out by normalizing after applying the formulas that I have told you for normalization, then we see after normalizing, we will get the values between the range minus one to one. So the val values are one and after normalizing, the value is 0 0.40. Similarly for H after normalizing, the value is 1.8 and zero. So now if you see that P2, the question is again same whether the person P2 is closer to P1 or P3. Now you will see 0.4 is in between zero and one. And here it is also 0.8. It is more closer to one. So 0.8 is more closer to one. It means P2 is more similar to P1. Here there is no not making any difference. But here 0.8 and zero that difference is more and 0.8 and one that difference is less. So after normalizing the data, we want to compare the attributes, both attributes to find the similarity among the persons. Then we have scaled the attributes on the common scale so that at least we can compare them, compare them and come out on the decision whether the person P2 is similar to P1 or P3. So now after applying the scaling, we can easily compare both attributes and see that person P2 is more similar to P1 because it was almost the equal difference and here the difference is less in comparison to this. So after applying scaling, we are getting the right output that P2 is more closer to P1, 
but when we are not applying scaling we were not in the position to compare the attributes at different scales and the answer we were getting wrong that we were guessing the answer that p2 is more closer to p3 so this is the importance of feature scaling the attributes which are not at the common scale there is no point to compare them you need to bring out at the common scale by using normalization standardization techniques and i have made you clear how we can bring them on the common scale using the standard formulas and now the outputs will be in the standard range and now you are in a position to compare and take any decision whatever you want to take so this is the feature scaling this we have to do in cleaning process in data pre processing process so we have seen what we can do what can be the loopholes present inside the data and missing data can be there coding of encoding of categorical data can be there imbalanced data can be there outliers can be there we have to scale the data on the common scale so these are the things we have to do in the data pre processing so now we will see the practical implementation part what all we have to do what are the meaning of every term what we have to do we are clear with that now we will proceed with the implementation part how we can proceed with the steps with the implementation part so we have seen these are the steps that we have to follow so i'll open this slide first we will collect the data import the libraries import the data set and one by one we will see how we can pre process the data that we are having so let's start with that you can do side by side along with me or you can note it down and do after the session as you feel comfortable so uh, i'll be i'm not using any python id i'm using open source platform that is google collab so i hope my screen is visible not as yet ma'am we are on to the ppt okay let me share again then i hope it's visible now right so visible okay so you can simply you can do side by side what you have to do or you can just note down the points to concentrate first what we are doing and then you can implement after the session so we are using the google collab notebooks you just need to type the google collab you will click on the link it will open the platform google collab many of you might be familiar with the google collab it is very simple to use so what you have to do uh, you just need to open this google collab it will take seconds to open after it is opened you need to open the new notebook just open the new notebook it will ask you for the sign in so i have not signed it with the google account so let me first sign in with my google account so just a minute i am signing in with my google account you just log in into your gmail logins so meanwhile you can also log in if you are not logged in so we have logged in into your gmail account and now you can access your google collab so i'll just share my screen again again i am opening my google collab notebook it will ask you for the new notebook i have just signed in at the back end it will open the new notebook where you can execute 
execute your Python code at runtime. So these are the code cells. Basically, you can insert code cell and text cell. Text cells as you are using comments in any language and code cells where you will be writing the series of instructions that you will be executing step by step. So we have seen the first step was importing the libraries. So firstly, we will import the libraries that are frequently used. So we are importing the libraries. First step is import numpy as NP for mathematical calculation for handling the arrays. I hope it's readable to everyone. Or shall I increase the size? It is readable, ma'am. OK. So it's import numpy as NP. We are just giving the allies name. What else we need for data set manipulation? We need pandas. So we will be importing pandas and we will we are giving the allies name. So we need not to write the full library name again and again. And if you are in doing some graph work, then you can import matplotlib or seaborn accordingly, whatever you want to use. So I'm importing matplotlib say and in, in matplotlib, I'm using the pyplot sub library. So that is pyplot as you can give the allies name. And for execution of the cell, you need to just press this run the cell. If everything goes well, there is no error, then you will get the green tick here. That means the instructions which you have written are executed well. You can see the green tick. It means these all the libraries have been imported successfully. NumPy for mathematical calculation, Pandas for data sets manipulation, and matplotlib for plotting the graphs. Now we have to collect the data sets. So I have taken a very a sample of data set just to illustrate you the data pre-processing steps. How to import them in Google Colab? You can save this Google Colab notebook with some name you want to give. You can rename it from here. Like I can rename it. I want to give the name as a data pre-processing. So you can rename your notebook here. It will be saved in your Google Drive from which you have logged in. Now you want to upload the data because First step is to collect the data. So I have created a random dummy data set to show you the steps of to explain you the concept of data pre-processing. How you will upload? You will go to this folder in files. You will go to the upload. And uh, I have saved my data in the on the desktop in FTP 2023. And, and this is the data CSV file. So I'm just opening this. So uh, Loaded successfully, you will be able to see your CSV file here. That is data.csv. You can simply double click on this file and you will get the snapshot of the data set, what attributes you are having. So we are having four attributes in this data set and only 10 rows so that I can explain you what exactly the data we are having. We can see step by step. Four attributes are country. This is the data of different customers country, age, salary, and whether the customer has purchased the product or not. So country is having the values France, Spain, and Germany. You should be clear that country, France, Spain, and Germany, three categories is there. It is of type categorical data. Age, it is having numeric values. Salary, it is again having numeric values. And purchase, it is having again categorical data with two categories, that is whether the customer has purchased the data or he has not purchased the data. So yes or no. And we are having some missing entries as you can see here also that we are having some missing entries like in salary, one entry is missing in age, one salary is missing. So we are having the missing data. We have to do the predictions on the basis of country, age and salary, whether the customer will purchase the product or not. So that is part of building the model, which model you will apply. As it is supervised data, label data, we are having inputs, we are having outputs also. And in cat it is dependent variable is categorical. So you will apply some classification algorithm. So you will apply classification algorithm. Now, which classification algorithm will you, you will be applying that we have to check. So you must be clear that whether we have to go for supervised or unsupervised and in unsupervised, 
or it is it it is supervised your dependent variable was whether the customer will purchase the product now it is having categorical data supervised so we will go for classification algorithm there are a n number of classification algorithms like k nearest neighbor logistic regression random forest decision tree now again you will check out which model will be better to apply but we are not going into the details how to build the model we are going into the details of pre processing the data so data pre processing we have done we have collected the data data is in the csv format we have imported the libraries we have imported the data set so we are done with the three steps of our data pre processing collect the data import the libraries and next step was import the data set now after uh, we have uploaded the data set yet the data is to be imported in this so we will insert from here this code cell we will insert the code cell here i'm just shortening it out so you are able to see the data as well as the code cells right now we will import the data how we will import the data from the pandas library we are having the read underscore csv function read underscore csv function we will call this function it takes one argument that is name of the file so name of the file should be exactly the, the same from which you want to read the data it is data.csv so we are writing in single code that is data.csv now read underscore csv function will help me in reading importing the data and we will store the data in some variable so that data will be in the data frame format you can print the data set also like you can print the data set by just writing the name of the variable in which you are storing the data google collab will also assist you it is very easy that you will be getting the name of the variables function arguments and you can simply execute by clicking the run cell so see you can see the data in the data format frame that is country age salary purchase you can see four columns are there 10 rows are there and these are the two missing values that are indicated by nan that the values are not present inside the data so we have imported the data set successfully now after importing the data set we have to extract the features because we have to predict the dependent variable and dependent variable is dependent on these three independent variables so we can separate out we can segregate independent variables in different variables and dependent variable in different variables again we will insert the code cell now we can now we will segregate the data so how we can segregate the data we have stored the data set into data set variable and we will use the iloc function that is locating the data index wise so we will i use the iloc function now i want to store my independent variables and features of the data separately so what are the independent variables country age and salary i have to store these three attributes with all rows in a separate variable and i want to store this purchase that is my dependent variable in a separate variable because in we will build machine learning model on x and dependent variable will be y so we have to separate out independent and dependent variables this is the general template you have to do for every machine learning application just by minor changes by changing the data set you can use the same collab file and work on so i am segregating the data say i will be storing this in x and locating the data index wise i want all rows so colon that means all the rows comma now i want what country age and salary so what i'll do i excluding this column i want everything so what i can do colon minus 1 i hope you are knowing this this is the range you are giving for columns now this upper bound is not included in the range that is minus 1 is the index of the last column so we are excluding this last column as upper bound in the range is not included and we will convert this into values because we will store the data in the form of array of features so now we have used the iloc function with all rows that column indicates all rows comma 
colon minus one means now we want all the columns excluding the last column and index of the last column is minus one. Now you can see. Now you can see whether you are getting the independent variables correctly or not. So what you will be doing? So we have given this dot values. We have given this. So we will print it. How we will print? Print. We want to print this variable x whether it is working fine or not. So we will execute it. So we are getting this error that is invalid index. So ILOC uses square brackets. I have used open parenthesis. You should also know how to read the errors. So that is colon comma colon minus one. So I'm deleting this one dot values. Right. So after this you will you will execute. We have corrected the error. So now you can see X. You are getting the matrix. You are getting the array of features with three independent variables. That is country age and salary. So we have segregated the data and the and data was earlier stored in the data set in the form of data frame consisting of four columns and 10 rows. Now we want to segregate it into two parts. One is X and one is Y. X will store all the independent variables and Y will store the dependent variable. So for locating the all the columns that will be present in the X, we have used the locate index function that is ILOC that indicates how many rows we want all the rows. So first column indicates all the 10 rows and column minus one means we want all the columns except the last column and minus one indicates the last column. Dot values means we are converting that data frame into array. So because it becomes easy for the machine learning algorithm to work on the array of values and we have printed it whether we are getting matrix of features correctly or not. So we have seen we are getting all the three independent variables correctly. I hope I'm clear till here. Next we want to store the Y that is the dependent variable. So again data set our entire data is present in data set. Now again we will use ILOC method. Remember to use square brackets. We want to remember to use square brackets that is colon that is the all the rows we want comma we want to store now dependent variable and index of the dependent variable is this we want to store in y that is purchased so what we will do comma column now we want we need not to give the range because we need to store only the last column so we are specifying the index of the last column that is minus 1 Again, we will be converting into values because we are converting it into array of values. We are converting data frame into values. We will be storing it in the variable that is say y. So we are extracting the last column, converting it into values and storing it into the y that is the dependent variable. Now we will print y and see whether we are getting the what should we get in y that is the dependent variable that is the array of values of purchase column just execute it so you are seeing we are getting this 10 instances that is all rows you can match from here no yes no no yes yes no yes it is giving me the array of values of the dependent variable so first we have imported the entire data set then we have segregated the data into features independent variables and dependent variable. So in X we are now having our independent variables and in Y we are having the dependent variable. So I hope I'm clear till here. So after segregating the data, now we have to handle the missing data. There are different methods to handle the missing data. So first we will see first method we can see that how to handle the missing data. Either we can simply delete the row that are having the missing values. So how we can do that? What we can do in this? How we can handle this missing data in this simple value? Or one other strategy is you can replace all the missing values will be replaced with the mean value. 
that one this is one of the most frequent used method that you can replace the values you can replace this value with the mean value of the entire data so we will calculate the mean and whatever will be the mean value of this age observations this value will be replaced with the mean value same as case with the salary we are having these salary values and we will calculate the mean value and the missing value will be replaced by the mean value so for the numerical attributes this is one of the common uh, measure we can take that we can replace all the missing values with the mean value so how we can replace the missing value with the mean value now we will see that for that we are use we will use the simple imputer class imputer means you want to impute the missing value you want to fill the missing value with certain value and we have decided that we will fill the missing value with the mean value so for that we are using simple imputer class from the scikit learn package so first we will import the scikit learn package and from that too we will import the impute module and from the impute module we want simple imputer class so we are importing the simple imputer class from the impute module from the scikit learn library after this we will create the instance of the class so that we can use the function so name of the class is simple imputer we will call its constructor with arguments as now we can pass the arguments you can see missing values what strategy you want to follow with this class so it will google collab will assist you what are the parameters what are the parameters that you can pass and help is given what you can do how you can do so we will use missing values simple imputer class parameter that is missing values missing values are indicated by numpy nan that is these values are missing nan indicates the values are missing and we want to use the strategy that is mean we want to replace it by the mean value so now we have just told that we will be using mean strategy we will be replacing the missing value with the mean value for that we are using the simple imputer class of the scikit learn library and that too for that we have included the impute module to include this class now after you have import called the class you have created we have created this instance say we create the name as imputer so imputer is the instance of the class simple imputer and we have set out the values nan are the missing values and we will be using the strategy as mean to replace it now after this what we have to we have to fit the strategy onto our data so how we will fit for that we are having fit method of simple imputer class we want to fit the strategy on what on independent variable on this age and salary on this numerical attributes so we will pass that fit the strategy you have to pass the data now data is present in we are present in x so you want all rows to colon comma comma you want this age and salary that is the first column and the second column so you will specify one that is age column colon range you will not include two because that will be excluded range upper bound is excluded so we have written three here one to three means excluding third column index starts from zero column so from from first column to second column it will fit this strategy so we are using the fit method of the simple imputer class that takes as an argument on which data you want to fit this strategy we want to fit this strategy on the matrix of features that is the independent variable and we want to fit this on the entire rows and on which column obviously on the numeric columns that is age and salary so they are present at first and 
second index. So we have passed that first and second index. Till now, we are just telling that these values will be replaced, but till now they are not replaced. For replacing that, we will call the transform method of the simple imputer class. Transform method of simple imputer class to replace the value. In this, we have decided the strategy. In this, we want to replace on this data we have given. And now transform method will replace the missing, will impute the missing values, will replace the missing values with the average value. So again, this transform method takes argument that on which data you want to replace the values, on which data you want to replace. So our data is same. We will pass X, the data is X on all rows. So that is colon, comma, first and second column. So we have given the range as we have given earlier. And now we want our column to be changed. Our X should be changed. So X, that is all the rows, comma, range of columns, that is first and second. So we have provided the range. So we are done that we have, we want to replace and transform will replace the missing values with the mean values. That is the strategy you have decided. After that, you can check out and print X, whether X is changed. Now your X will be age and salary should be replaced with the meaning, missing mean value. So we will see that. The cells are executed and now you can see that your missing values are replaced with the mean values. You can see this France 35 after that Spain that is 38.7. So this is the mean value of the observations. Similarly, you can see this Germany 40 salary was missing and this missing value is replaced by the mean value that is 6377.77. So this is how this is the one technique how we can handle the missing data. We can replace the numerical attributes. If the attributes are numerical, we can replace them by the mean value. And how we can replace them with them by using the simple imputer class from scikit-learn impute package and what strategy you have to follow and on what data you want to apply and then you want to apply you want to replace then for that you will use the transform method of the simple imputer class and in this columns it is being changed so we have mentioned first and second index column and we are printing the x so we have done one work we have done one data pre-processing that now our data is not having any missing values i hope it's clear There are again different strategies to handle the missing data. You can simply delete the row. You can simply delete the row that are having missing values. They will be replaced. Like say if I. Uh, say I would like to tell you the different methods. So I just. Say cut this. You have seen all this. So I'll just. Write the code here for you that we have done one technique to handle the missing data. How we have handled the missing data. So you can have this from here. Now you can see. Uh, just oh, let me open my Google Colab. Now we have seen, we have printed the data here till now. We have, you can see X. You can print the values. can print the X. It will give you the matrix of features. Right, so you are seeing that you are having the replaced missing values with the main value, right? Shall we proceed further? Another different methods are you can simply delete the row which are having missing values like suppose I just open the data set. We are having say this data set. Data I'm opening it. With 
the Excel. So this is the data which you were seeing. Say I enter one more entry, say Germany. Now the ages say we are having not any age. We are having 80,000 and we have the customer has say purchase the item. We are I'm having one entry more say Spain. Now ages say 65 and salary is say blank and customer say has not purchased any product. So now I have saved the data again, but I have added two entries in the original data set and again two entries are blank. So we have saved. Yes, we will upload this again on the Google Colab. You will see more further entries. I'm uploading the data again. I want to show you different methods. So I have uploaded. I'm uploading the data again. Data file CSV file. It is uploaded. You can double click on it. Now you are seeing 12 entries are there. You can see all these 12 rows here. I've added this row with age blank. I have added this another row with salary blank. So these are the missing values. So this is one of the technique that how you can handle you. It will handle replace all the missing values with the mean value by using the concept of simple imputer class and using their strategy mean and fit and transform method. Is it clear to all? Right. Now what we can do is see uh, we can do more things how we can now you can again see print you can again you will have to execute import the libraries because we have loaded the fresh data. So again we are importing the data we are printing. Now you are having this rows. You can see NAN missing values. Now I am extracting again the metrics of features again. So you are seeing this independent variables are in X. I'm executing those cells again just because we have changed our data. Now we are having this Y as dependent variable again. I'm printing X again. You are seeing these are NAN values. I'm inserting one more code cell and I want to print Y also say so print Y I'm executing. It will print the dependent variable. So now another strategy that we can use is we can simply want to delete the row. If your data set is too large and you are thinking that your missing values are very less then you can simply delete that row. So how we will do how we will delete that row. What you can do is that. Your data set is saved in which variable that is data set variable. So first we will check whether your data set contains null values contains missing values or not. So how we can check that data set dot is in pandas library. We are having is null method to check. So we will check whether there are any missing entries or not. So you will execute it. It will show where are the missing values. It will give you true. You are seeing here it is true. Here it is true. Here it is true. Here it is true. So these are the missing entries and where the values are present. That means the data is present there. So first we have checked whether the entries are null and if they are null then where they are null. So where there is no value missing value blank value that true is mentioned here. Now we want to check that in which column how many entries are there so that we know. What we can do is what we can do is now like we can sum that we can do data set. Data set is null and we want to sum so we want to sum how many values in every column are blank. We want to check out that. So how we can do that? We will just call the sum method and you can see that in country there is no blank entry, no missing entry. It's zero in age. There are two entries blank. You can see cross check from the data as well in salary. Also, there are two entries blank and in purchase column. There is no entry blank. So we have seen how we can check that in which column how many missing values are there. So in age and salary 
two two missing values are there as you can see one is here another is here one is here and another is here so after checking out that we have seen how many columns are having values now you can display the rows also which are having those null values how you can display the rows first you have check whether it is containing null then you want to summarize that how many columns are containing null values and similarly you can display that rows for that column key display all the rows if values are missing so how we can do that we can simply use data set our data is in the data set to data set we can do now square brackets in data set what we want we want age column in age and salary column missing values are there so we are using age column it will give you the columns that are present also so we are using age column and in that too we are using we want to check is null so it will return me the none all, all the rows corresponding to the age column which are having missing values so let's execute it so now you can see it is returning me the rows for the age column which are having the missing values so we were having the spain entry and we were having this germany entry which were having missing values similarly for salary you will just change the name of the column and it will display all the rows for the salary column which are not having any missing values so in this way you can summarize your data these are just the ways to summarize your data the columns are containing how many null values and you want to display corresponding to that column all the rows which are containing the missing values so now you can see we can see the dimensions of our data using the shape method that is data set dot shape so if you are executing this cell you will see the shape that is the dimensions number of rows and number of columns we are having 12 rows and four columns so it is returning the shape that is the dimension of the data set as 12 comma 4 now suppose we want to delete the rows if the row is having the missing value so how we will delete that our data is in data set method is draw na that is the method name how you want to delete it takes the parameter you can see the parameter it is how how takes two values how parameter takes two values any or all so all means the row which is containing all the values null and any means any attribute which is containing the null value will be deleted so drop any means you want to delete the row which are having any even even a single null value is there so that row will be deleted and side by side we can show the dimensions of the data set also so you can see now we will execute the cell now you can see four rows are deleted one this row because this row was having null value one this row because this row was having null value one this row because this was having null value and one this row so by checking the dimensions we are seeing that all the rows we also want to do the same we want to delete the rows which were having the null values so simple method was from the data set use the drop in a method how parameters take two values any and all any means it will drop the row which is having even a single null value and you can check the dimensions by checking the that four rows are deleted and columns are still the same so in this way if we use all all means the row which will have all the attributes values as null that will be deleted but we are not having any such row in which all the four attribute values are null so there will be no change in the shape of the data dimensions of the data so this is the another method first method i told you that you can replace the missing value with the mean value using simple imputer class another method i told told you that you can simply delete the row which are having the missing values so i hope i am clear till here another methods are also there like if i print the data set if i print the data set you another different methods i have told you two different strategies 
these are the original data set. We have not impacted the original data set. Now I have told you two strategies and other methods are also there. You can use forward fill method or backward fill method to fill that missing value. What is forward fill and backward fill method? You can use data set dot that is fill na. That is means fill the missing entry value with what you will use method equal to method name is forward fill. So it is indicated by F fill. And after this, it will fill the missing value with the forward value. You can execute it. Now you can see, see the entry Germany 40. This was missing. Forward fill means this value will be filled with this. So it is now 61,000. Similarly, Spain, you can see it was 35. And here also, it was Spain, it was missing. So it has filled this forward fill. Jo aage wali value thi, it is filled with that value. So missing value is filled with this value. Similarly, Germany, you can see forward value was 37. So missing value is filled with 37. So similarly, Spain salary was missing 80,000. So it has filled with its forward value. That is 80,000. So either you can replace it with the mean value. You can delete the rows if your data set is too large. You can use forward fill method. You can use backward fill. Backward fill will fill with the backward entry. Like if I fill, show you the data set again, we have not changed the data set. We are temporarily doing the changes. So I'll print the data set again. Still, it is NN because we have not stored the changes into some variable into data frame. So now I use a backward fill method. You will see the change. Again, fill NA method you will be using. So I'm using this fill NA method again. But here instead of forward fill, now I'm using backward fill. Now you execute the cell. Now you see this Germany 40. It was missing its salary. So backward fill means the piche wala value fill ho jayega. So backward value was 58. So it is filled was filled with 58. The Spain age was missing. Now it is filled with 48. Backward value of age was 48. So it is filled with 48. Similarly, Germany age that is 65. It is filled with 65. And iske piche kuch tha nahi, to so still it is missing. So it is still NN. So these four methods I have told you, there are another different methods also still. You can replace with the median value. You can replace like I have told you how to handle the numerical attributes with the missing values. Say if any value in country is missing, that means if data is categorical and in that if the data is missing, then you can replace it with the mod value. Mod means most frequent value. You can do that. So there are different techniques to handle the missing data. I have discussed four of the strategies. Replace with the mean value. Delete the rows which are not having any missing value, which are having any missing value. You can use forward fill method or you can use backward fill method. So these are the different strategies to handle the missing data. So I hope I'm clear till here. Right. Now we will see how we can encode the data. Like I told you, if your variables are categorical, then how you can encode them? We have to convert them into numerical attributes. So how you can convert them into numerical attributes? So we are moving towards the, and just see the presentation once again. I'm sharing my screen once again. Uh, you see this presentation screen so you, that you are clear with the steps that what we are following. We have get the data set in the format of CSV file. We have imported the libraries that are frequently used, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, whatever you require. Then we have imported the data set using read underscore CSV function. Then we have handled the missing data. So we have seen the missing data are represented by NAN. We, we have seen four strategies, how to delete the row, how to replace with mean value, how to replace with forward fill value and backward fill method. Now we will see another that is how to encode the 
categorical data. Now means if the data is categorical, your attribute values are in category nature and we want to encode them. We want to convert them into numerical values so that machine learning models can be easily applied on the numerical values. So how we can encode them? I'm switching back to the Google Colab. So I'm sharing my screen once again. Uh, we are back to the Google Colab. We are working on the same data set. Now how we can encode the categorical data? So we, we are having two attributes here which are of categorical nature. One is country and one is purchased. Country is having three categories, France, Spain and Germany. And purchase that is dependent variable is having two categories that is no and yes. So how we will encode them? Let's see. I'm inserting one more code cell. Now how we will encode? For that, we are having the class in the scikit-learn package that is column transformer. For in that, you have to specify that what encoding technique you will be applying. So from scikit-learn library and that too from the scikit-learn library, we will import the compose module you can see it is coming. Compose. Now from the compose module, you will import. You will import the column transformer class. Column transformer class. We have imported this column transformer class. You can see. Right from scikit-learn package, we are importing the column transformer class from the compose module and one more class we need there are two types of encoding one is one hoot encoding another one is label encoding so if data is of different category uh, multiple categories are there more than two we prefer to apply one hoot encoding and if it is of yes no true false two categories are there then we apply label encoding so first we are encoding this country attribute that is having more than two categories. So we will apply one hot encoding. What is one uh, one hot encoding for that? We are importing its class that is from again sklearn library. Psych that is scikit-learn library, very useful library. Different models you can implement from this library. And from this we are importing this pre-processing module. And from this, we are importing the class one hot encoder. Right? So we have, we require two classes. One is column transformer and one is one hot encoder that are present in scikit-learn library and in that to compose and pre-processing modules. So after importing the classes, we are in a position to create the instance of the class and call the functions of the class through the objects. So how we can. Call the we are. Using the column transformer class. Column transformer class. What parameters it take? You can see transformers is the first parameter. So transformers is the first parameter. In this we have to specify what you are trying to do. So we are trying to do the encoding. You will specify this in square brackets what you are trying to do. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to encode the categorical attributes, comma, what type of encoding you want to apply. We want to apply one hot encoding on the. So we are calling one hot encoder we are telling what encoding we want to apply so we are calling this and then on which column you want to apply you will specify the index so index is on country want to apply so its index is zero index of the column starts from the zero so we are applying it on the zeroth column I'm closing the brackets what I have used that is of transformers and this one is of this one. This bracket is closed and this bracket is closed. So we are applying encoding that is 
we are applying this in coder the single quotes was missing and we are applying one hot encoder technique and on which column you want to apply we want to apply it on the zeroth column that is the country column we want to do that so after this these brackets are coming extra right after this you need not want to encode the remaining columns so second parameter you will use remainder that is you don't want to encode the remaining columns of the data so you will set this remainder you can see this remainder column is there that value you will set it to you don't want to encode so you will set it to pass through that means you have to skip the remaining columns you need not to do anything for that no encoding to be applied for that after this we have just tell that what we want to do there is some might be error is there we are creating the instance of the class that is minute some bracket problem is there in transformers we are applying encoder and we are creating the instance of the class say column transformer so we have created the instance of the class we are calling the constructor of this class column transformer and we are applying transformers parameter with encoder we want to encode the categorical attribute which encoding you want to apply one hot encoding we want to apply and third parameter is on which column you want to apply and you will set the remainder parameter as pass through because you don't want to encode the remaining attributes of the data set after this after you have created this instance and called the constructors and set the values now we want to what we want we want to apply on this data on which data you want to apply in x variable you were having the matrix of features so we want to apply we are having fit underscore transform method of column transformer class so we are calling it through object of that class that is ct the name of the object and we are calling fit transform method on which data we want to apply on x you want to apply that is the matrix of features you want to apply and in that you want to again you will convert it into array so you will convert this entire data into array so here we are converting it into array so i'm just writing it that we are converting this data which it will be encoding the categorical attributes into array so this is we have done i hope all the brackets are closed put underscore transform on x we want to do now we will we have updated our x matrix of features will be updated and we will print this x that is we will execute it now you will are able to see see what you are seeing now your age column is as it is that is 44 27 30 your salary column is as it is your country column is encoded you have applied one hot encoding so france represents 100 spain represents 001 germany represents 010 so these are the codes that you have given to the categorical data i hope it's clear we have to convert categorical attribute into numerical attribute so that we can apply machine learning process so to apply this machine learning process we have applied one hot encoding because now france is being represented by the code 100 these are known as dummy variables we have added dummy columns for this country now france is represented by 100 spain is represented by 
Germany is represented by zero one zero. So there is nothing difficult for that. You need the column transformer class, and you need one hot encoding. You want to apply with on which data you want to apply. It's as simple as that, and print that data. That's it. So we have encoded our one independent variable country that was of categorical nature into numerical attributes with this dummy variables added. Now our dependent variable is also of type categorical, but it is having only two categories. That is yes and no. So we will now encode this dependent variable using label encoder class. We will apply label encoding. So how we will insert the code cell for that again from the scikit learn. From scikit learn pre-processing module, we will import. Earlier we have imported column transformer. And one hot encoder class. Now we will be importing label encoder. Import label encoder class. So we have imported the label encoder class. It is very easy. You have nothing to do. You have to call the constructor of the class. No arguments are to be set. Create the instance of the class. Say we are creating the instance of the class. Say. We have created the instance of the class. Now through the instance, we can call the method. So we will call the method spit underscore transform. This is the method name. It is showing also. You can simply shift enter and you will get it in the in your window. So it is spit underscore transform method. Now what you want to apply on which data? We want to encode onto dependent variable that is purchased. And it is present in which variable? Y, because we have segregated our original data set into X and Y. So now we want to apply this encoding on what? On Y, that is the dependent variables. That's why we have segregated our original data into independent variables and dependent variable. Now our Y will be changed. So we will update our Y because now we have applied label encoding to the Y attribute. Y means dependent variables that is purchased and we will see whether it is encoded properly or not by printing the Y. Now we will execute. If no errors are there, it will be executed and you can see that no yes are converted into 0 1. No 0 yes 1. Then no no that means 0 0. Yes yes means 1 1 0 and so on. So no is represented encoded as 0. And why yes as encoded as one. So we have done one more step of encoding the categorical attributes. Independent variable country also we have encoded by adding three dummy variables. Why three columns are added? Because there were three categories, France, Spain and Germany. So three columns, dummy columns have been added. And similarly, we have encoded the purchased attribute that is dependent variable into it was having only two categories so it has been encoded into 0 and 1 and you just need to call the fit underscore transform method and in that it will take the argument that you want to apply the specific encoding on which set of data so your data is present in y so we have applied it on the y so we have encoded our categorical attributes so i'll switch to the slides uh, the slides once again so that you can uh, see that uh, what step are we on so let me share my screen once again it does have so you have seen we have encoded the we have encoded the categorical data we have learned how to handle the missing data we have learned how to encode the categorical data Right now we have to split our data into training and test set. I have already told you because training means on this set of data, the machine will learn and test data will be used to evaluate the performance of the model to evaluate the accuracy of the model because these are the new data points. So how you will split your data into training and test set, how we can do that? I'll share my Google Colab link once again. If you are having any doubts, you can ask me. If you are doing simultaneously, that is then also you can do. 
now i'll share my screen once again this is my google colab now we have done encoding we have handled the missing data now we will learn how to split the data which is very important as we have to do in every at every stage we have to definitely split the data so how we can split the data again for that we will use mod uh, train test split function is there so from sklearn library we will include the model underscore selection module and from this module we will import the function that is train underscore test underscore split this is the name of the function we are importing so after we have imported the function from the scikit learn model selection module it takes this function takes basic four parameters that is train which function we have imported train underscore test underscore split this is the inbuilt function now it takes what x that is the independent variables y that is the dependent variables what test size you want this is the third parameter you can see here third parameter is test size so i told you the standard ratio is 80% in training data and 20% in the test data so we will specify 20% that is 0.2 as test data will be the size of the test data and fourth parameter you can see that is random state that is used to initialize the seed generator to so random state you can take any value any integer value so i am taking this value equal to 1 1 indicates that every time you run same observations will be in the training set and same observations will be in the test set this is the meaning of value 1 which you are assigning to the random state means every time the training set and the test set observations data points should be same so this is the function minimally we are passing the many other parameters are also there but we have to split our x y test size we want to keep 20% and random state is assigned 1 because we want that every time the training and test set should contain same observations so and this will give me the data split into four parameters what will be the four parameters i am writing that we will be having x is the set of independent variables what is that country age and salary so x training will be different we we'll give it the name x train x test will be different in testing we will be having this similarly y train will be different and y testing will be different so we have the data has been splitted now we will be having training data different and test data different and that to x training will consist of features and y training will consist of dependent variable so now we will print this whether we are getting the correct or not so we will print one by one if everything goes well so we will print what we want to print x train what observations come in x train we will execute this cell now you can see uh, these are the three columns which we have encoded for country this is age and this is salary now you can see training is consisting of what 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 observations are there 80% of 12 observations that is nine observations are in the training set and in test set remaining three observations will be there like if i print x test so three observations will be coming in that test data x test x means independent variables so we print x test you can see three observations are there so out of 12 it has randomly split it it's not ki upar wali ya niche wali hi hongi randomly the data will be split it into 80 20 ratio so 80% of 12 observation that is nine entries goes into the training set and remaining three entries goes into the testing set so this is how we split now we want to print the training y data also 
so we will print y train so what will y contain it is containing purchased column so in training we will be having nine nine observation yes no yes no that has been already encoded into 0 and 1 because we have encoded our categorical attributes into numerical attributes and similarly now when we print y test then we will be having three observations y test so this is we are having three observations so training means on this you will build your machine learning model this will be the new set of data that you will be giving to the machine this is the actual dependent variable values corresponding to the training data and these are the values for this we you want to predict so these are the actual values which are present and when you will be applying the model that will be the predicted values so whether predicted values are matching with the actual values or there is some difference that that will estimate your accuracy so this is how we can split the model by using train underscore test underscore split method and what you want to split you have to just mention the four parameters and you can print it one by one i hope it's clear to everyone so i'll show you the presentation once again so that you are clear with on what step we are now in the implementation part so i'll show you the presentation once again that is we have split the data into the training set and test set so these are the features that you should know how we can do that i hope it's clear so next is the feature scaling after splitting only you will apply the feature scaling and it is not necessary that you need to apply feature scaling every time because it will only be applicable when you are want to compare the different attributes so how we can apply you are knowing different techniques standardization and normalization i have already told you but how we can implement it we will see it how we can implement simply you have to import the classes and the functions and you should know what is the prototype of that function how we can use that function what are the signature of that function what is the meaning of arguments that we have to check out so i'll share my google collab once again this is my google collab now we will see how we can do feature scaling i have inserted one code cell again for that standardization see i am applying standardization because it is applicable for every situation so we will apply standardization technique for feature scaling again from sklearn module for pre processing you will import we are having the class standard scalar for standardization standard scalar so we will import this class after importing the class you just need to create the instance of the class and call the function through that object so what we can do now we will call create the instance of the class standard scalar we call the constructor without any arguments we need not to set anything and we are creating the object so sc is the instance of the class now through sc object we are calling again the fit underscore transform method we are having again this method in standard scalar class what it takes we want to scale the features on what we want to scale the features on the training data so on the training data fit underscore transform will apply the standardization that formula and will also replace with the value we are clear with that standardization was what x minus mean divided by x minus x max minus x min so it will find that value corresponding to every x and will also replace when we are using fit underscore transform so it means it will apply that and it will replace also so we want to apply on the training data so our training data is now in x underscore train we have stored our x features what we want we want all columns 
and what we want in x train what we are having we are having all the matrix of features and we want to train feature scaling we want to apply on what we want to apply it on the say salary column we want to apply it on the age column so how we can apply you will mention the range so we want to apply from the second index salary we want to do from salary to everyone nothing else is there so it will stop here itself and on the test data how it will apply again you will call the now you need not to replace because we want to replace the same value that standard scalar value has been given mean and standard uh, min and max values that will be same so we are applying only transform method on test data again you will apply on all the rows and from salary column we want to apply so we will do that now we will print now we will print now your training and test data will be changing so this will be same that updated training will be this part that is x train and this will be same i'm just copying it from here that is the test data because now it has been replaced by the standardized value so this is x test all the rows and salary column on test data you need not to apply fit underscore transform because you need not to recalculate the things you only want to replace with that so now you will print your x train print x train you will see you will see the values of the salary column you can see they are standardized into the range now they are lying into the range of minus 1 to 1 so this is how you can apply standardization similarly you can see the test data also it has also been standardized those three observations so you will do x underscore test so those three observations will also be standardized so this is how we have standardized the numerical attributes in x that is age and salary now they are on the common range now you can apply the you can do the comparison is it okay to all so this is this is not a necessary step but yes if it is required then you have to do so i'll conclude with the session as i'm not having more time but yes content is very far we can learn any time in future but i'll conclude the data pre processing steps first you will import the libraries you have collected the data then you will have import the data set using read underscore csv function we have segregated the data set into set of features and into set of independent variables by locating the index we have printed them then we have learned how to replace it with the mean value using simple imputer class you can check out if it contains any null values how many columns are containing how many missing entries you want to display all the rows corresponding to the column then you want to check the dimensions of the data earlier it was 12 and 4 12 rows and 4 columns but now you want to delete the rows that are having missing values so we have used drop in a method and similarly you can use forward fill method to forward fill using fill na and similarly you can use backward fill so this was how you can handle the missing data next we have learned how to encode the categorical data for that we have used one hot encoder class and column transformer class so we first we have told the strategy what we will be doing and on which data we will be doing and then we will apply fit underscore transform method on what you want on x you want because we have already specified at zeroth index because we want to encode country attribute so it will give me the dummy variables added three added because three categories were there then you want to encode your dependent variables also that is purchase which are having two categories only so we just called the label encoder class with transform method 
on y because y is the dependent variable on which you want to encode. Then we learn how to split the data into training set and test set by calling the train test split function. What you want to split x, y, what will be the test size and what will be the random state. After that, we learn how to do feature scaling using standardization. So just we call the standard scalar object created and call the fit transform function on which you want to apply. Then you will see that it has been standardized onto the range of minus one to one. Now you can do the comparison. So I stop my session here. Though there is more to learn, definitely in future, if I'll get a chance, I can share more knowledge with you people. Over to you, Sonia, ma'am. Any queries, anyone? If you have any queries, you can put up in the chat window. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Anu, ma'am, for sharing your valuable insights with us. Thank you for being a speaker for the day. Thank you for your valuable time and effort. Thank you, ma'am. Thank all. you, participants, for your patience. Thank you, everyone. We will be joining back tomorrow at 10 o'clock with another session in Python itself. Tomorrow we would be having the sessions on data mining in Python and social media analytics using Python. The speaker for the session would be Mr. Munna Pandey. He is a technical trainer. He would be associating with us for both the sessions tomorrow. Both the sessions would be hands-on sessions for text mining and social media analytics. Thank you so much for the day. Thank you all. Meet you all tomorrow at 10. Have a nice day.